Hey everyone, welcome. This video I'm going to be teaching you how to read and write to a file. So this is the basis for file IO and eventually we're going to move to a database. So I'm pretty excited. Make sure you are up to speed with the code we have here. This is like the main important stuff, just a book class with a title and pages. However, some of the stuff might come up as well. And then we're just creating a book object down here. So get up to speed with this. And now I'm going to zoom in a little bit and go down to the bottom so we can write more code. All right, so first thing, writing and reading from a file is actually fairly easy in Python. And the easiest thing to do is actually have Python generate that file for us. So I'm gonna be showing you guys how to do that first. This is a lot more convenient than having to worry about where to put it in the file system or anything like that. So all we do, is say open and pass in the file name. So we'll just call it mm, input.txt. And to get Python to create it for us, we're going to open this in a special mode called append, which would allow us to append data to this. So just pass a inside of a string and let's just try this out. Run, go to your files and what, look at that. We got an input.txt. You can call it whatever you want. You don't even have to have the .txt. So I could go in here and just put input, run it, and look, it makes an input. So that's how you can just create files really easily. But I'm gonna get rid of that one we just made. Just keep input.txt. And now I'm gonna be teaching you how to write to this file. So in my opinion, the easiest way to do that is to actually put a W here for write. Anytime we run through this code, it's going to override whatever's in that file. So it just makes it easier so as we're learning, it doesn't just append a ton of junk to the file. This will keep it fresh every execution. So to do this now, we wanna actually keep a reference to the file such that we can continue to work with it. So we'll assign this to a variable like so. Now to write to the file, all you have to do is say file.write and pass in some string. So as an example, I'll put test, execute it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna open, I thought I deleted you. Oh, I forgot to change it back. <laughs> All right, so we'll change this input.txt, run this, and that should go inside of this input.txt and I'll get rid of this other file. So input.txt right here and it says test. So congrats guys, you efficiently created and wrote to a text file. If you pretty much wanted to create it if it doesn't exist, all you would have to do is have this open above here and change this to A. So now it's going to open it and if it has stuff in there, it's not gonna hurt it, but if the file doesn't exist, it'll create it. So running this, we don't get any errors and input.txt has the same exact information. So what would we wanna do with this text file? Well, my first thought is to represent data. So let's say we wanted to have a book in here. So we might have are you my mother? And let's say we separated the title from the number of pages using a tab. I mean, you can represent it however you want, whatever is easiest for you to parse in your code. So I'm gonna use tabs and I'll teach you how to work with those. And then you can have a number of pages. And then it'd be cool if we had another book on the next line and then a tab and the number of pages. So I think that's the ideal structure and then you could easily go into the input.txt, you could add books yourself, or you could read what it looks like, however you wanna do it. So let's try to do that in code. So we'll get rid of this here. And instead of just typing it out, we're actually gonna do it in this write. So are you my mother backslash T 72. I think you could actually just use a tab if you wanted, like so. End that with a new line, and then you could put the next book here or if you just like to keep your code a little bit cleaner, you could write another one. It's gonna be the last one, so I'm not gonna put that new line in here. And now we could replace this book. Digging ist dog, that's kind of hard to type for some reason. All right, so let's run this and take a look at input.txt and look at that, wow. And check this out, I could actually split these. And now we can see the input.txt while we are working with our code. Next up, whenever you're done working with a file, you wanna say file.close. So that is beginning to end how to open, write to, and close a file. Now let's do the opposite. And I want to read from this file. So we open it the same way. We just say open, pass in a file name, input.txt, comma. And this time we're going to use R for read. 
Now this is probably the hardest part, which is figuring out how to get the data and parse it properly. So let's just say data, and we'll say file.read, and then print data. So printing it, and it seems to work. And actually this read here will return a string. So that's not exactly what I want because just having a string of all of the data is a little bit sloppy. I would much rather have a list or some structure like that. So what you can do is you could use a split and pass in the new line character. So now the string is going to be split by line. Running it now, and you can see we got a list, one element here, and then another element here. At this point, we're done reading from the file, so we can just say file.close, and we can continue to work with data beyond the file being open. We read it, get it in a variable, and then close the file, we're done working with it. So this should work just the same, but now what I wanna do is actually wanna parse this a little bit farther so that we don't just have a string with a title and a number here. So we can actually split based on the tab character because I assumed there's not gonna be very many titles that have a tab character, hopefully. So that, in my opinion, was a good way to split it, although you could put it title on a line, page number on the next line, next title on the next line, however you wanna do it. So let's try to get the first book out of here. So what we would do is we would say book one, we'll just say book one data, and we're going to get the first element inside of the data list. So we wanna grab this one here, index zero, dot split. It's a string, so we can use split, and we want to split on the tab character. So that's going to return a list and assign it to book one data. We could then use book one data to actually create a book object. So book, we can call it book or book one, it doesn't really matter. I'll just be consistent with what I got here. So book one is a new book object. The title is going to be book one data index zero. The number of pages is going to be book one data index one. And then we can print book one. So if you wanna see this out just a little bit more, we can print book one data here so we can follow along. So let's run this. You know what? I think we're getting an error because Visual Studio Code replaced my tab with spaces. So I am going to get rid of that and put a T there. I think this should work now. So running this, all right, there we go. Man, that could have been a really nasty bug if I didn't think. So we start with this master list, Are You My Mother, tab 72, and then the digging is dog, tab 72. Structurally wise, it still looks exactly the same in the input.txt because those backslash t's are rendered right here. Then what we do is we grab that first element by saying data zero, calling the split method to split it out into the individual elements of are you my mother and then 72. Then we grab that first member by using zero, so that gets the title, and then one to grab the next element, which gets the 72, the number of pages. We pass both of those into a book initializer to get a new book object referenced by book one here. And we can print book one and get that object. So yeah, like I said, the reading is actually the hard part. Writing is pretty easy. We can do the same thing with another book here. So book two, and then what we would type in here is data index one, dot split by the tab character. And then we'll just grab the title of that. And we can actually just do this a little bit shorter here. So we could pass this to book like so. And then again with index one. So maybe that's a bad way to do it, but either way it should get the job done. I'm gonna drag this text file over a little bit so you can see. And then after this, we will print book two. Run this and it works. So hopefully you're able to follow along with that on reading and writing to files. My concluding thought for this is that if you're working with something very simple, a text file can do the job. You don't always need to have a database. If you're just doing a configuration file or something like that, just do it in a text file. However, you can see that if things get pretty complex, 
parsing the data is going to be a living nightmare. So in that situation, a database is going to be better. We have about two more videos to go, and then we're gonna start talking about working with databases, which I'm actually really excited for. If you guys know me, I actually started this YouTube channel with database junk. So looking forward to work with that. But for now, we're gonna go into this just a little bit more and talk about a very useful keyword with. Stay tuned, I'll see you then.